Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to obviously try and finish this uh, painting. Now, as you can see, a lot of the main tones are in all the pinks, the hues, the blues, uh, uh, and the purples and the pinks and everything. It's going to really come to life there. But I think there's still lighter tones to be added, and that's mainly in the clouds and the ripples of the shore that's coming closest to us. Now, if you squint your eyes again, you can see it's quite a dull picture naturally, but if you squint your eyes at the image, I've, I've got a printout here, but I've actually got a, uh, another reference. Um, I can see the lightest tones are obviously on the left-hand side, the ripples here, and right at the top of the composition, um, you've got these really bright whitish blues, um, and we can actually implement some more blue again. So the only blue we've really added is the ground, which is still coming through a lot of those gaps, which we are going to leave the majority of it. Um, but we are going to lighten the clouds and the ripples with a lighter blue. Now again, remember the uh, colour palette, the analogous um, theme we've got going on here. Obviously, three colours from the same side of the colour wheel, and that's the purple, the blue and the magenta. We are going to go back to the blue and do some lighter blues this time. We've done the lighter magentas. Um, since the last video, I think I've just altered a couple of things. I think I've just um, articulated the lamppost, some of the rocks on the left made them a little bit higher, and I've made the pink on the horizon slightly lighter, because obviously that's where the, the source of the light is coming from, the left-hand side, uh, just between the lamppost and the bench. I think that's the lightest point. And then it just slowly gets uh, cooler and duller in tone from that point. Um, but yeah, get your palette. I think if you get those those colours, those four colours we've been using. All right, so that's the white, the magenta, the Prussian blue, and the black. I'm going to start mixing those lighter colours for the clouds. Now, if you notice, I've just gone in with Prussian blue and white. Okay. So a hint of magenta. So I'm getting really light now. The reason I'm adding the magenta is so it doesn't be too much of a uh, contrast from the, the magenta theme we've got going on here. So I'm just adding a little bit of magenta there. So it's more of a creamy blue. And then that's, um, I think that's a pretty good colour actually. I'm just going to pepper on the tops of those lightest bits of the purple. Now I think, for example, on here, the lightest areas. Yeah, I think that might be a little bit too light, so I'm going to dull that down a little bit more blue, a little more magenta. See, the key is not to make so much of a jump so it looks a little bit strange on the image. So each time you're gradually making things lighter, you're going step by step and you're looking at the relationship to your last tone. You've made lighter the lightest tones we've got on here. For example, the ripples, we're going to go a step lighter. But the only difference here, we're not adding as much magenta. We're going back to the blue theme. So it's more of a purpley blue we've got. Okay, so let's go back onto that again. That's better. And again, I'm scumbling because I don't want anything too, too bold. And that's working nicely with the pink. Move that over here as well. I'm only going over those areas with the absolute lightest points of the clouds, the tops of those clouds on the top left hand side. There. And then on the right hand side, the tops of these clouds here, you can really articulate the top there, get those bumpy shapes. Don't get rid of too much of the pink, you still want that coming through the gaps, but they all work together in harmony. Okay. And then we've got a little bit 
Now you will need to sometimes go with a slightly darker tone, that's going to marry well with the lighter tone you've just added. For example like here, I've just added a slightly more pinky purpley colour and that's going to just merge in with that lighter tone you've just used. So each time you're revising the relationship between tones to make a greater blend I guess so the jump isn't so um, intense I guess so so much so dramatic um, so usually I'll be on this for a long time but I think just trying to simplify it as much as possible for the sake of the tutorial I think um, I think you can get the basics of cloud formations and how tones work, which is using two colours. Um, but yeah. Okay, I'll leave the clouds now, we're going to go straight onto the water. Now again, notice what I'm doing with the palette, I'm keeping to those blues and a little bit of magenta, but predominantly blue, and then the white. I'm not adding any black, I think the black isn't really needed at the moment so much because the black initial order to get those darker tones, the duller tones, and the, and the tones to go more in the distance, to create distance. Now we're doing those last tones, those lighter tones, we're gonna have more contrast and color in. I'm just gonna see what that looks like. Yeah, we need like lighter blues now happening. And I'm keeping to the left-hand side because that's where the ripples are the most. Coming onto there. And those blues are kind of sitting on top of the previous purples, which is ideal. Depends how much detail you want because, say, if you're doing a more hyper realistic painting or something with a lot of detail, you want to take your time on areas like this where there's kind of lots more information on this left hand side near the rocks, especially, and in the sand, there's a lot more information. I am going to add more information, I am obviously currently doing that, but um, you can take a lot more time over this generally. Um, And as we're going to come down here, obviously the lightest tones are here. We're still going to keep the blue alive, but we're just going to dull it a little bit. 
dark in it like that. So keep that blue relatively light. And that's going to come down here. So now you, what you've got happening is you've got those blues representing the real kind of lightest, warmest tones of the shore. And that's working well with the pink. And then the pink's just going to be used only as that, as that distance goes into the ocean there. And then right on the distance, we've got that slightly like browny pink. And then everything's working. Heighten that a little bit more, that real lightest point. On the left hand side, just here. Do some highlights coming up here as well as you go deeper into the water. Just like those blues there, slightly darker. Just sitting on some of those areas. <clears throat> so again, remember trying each time to drag slightly diagonal away from kind of this point and come kind of down there. And again, notice there's more extreme changes as they're coming further down is because as things come closer, they don't just get warmer in tone, they become more contrasted. So the darks become darker, the lights become lighter um, compared to the distance where we've got the kind of more subtle changes. For example, the horizon line is more of a grey and then we've got the, uh, the sea colours obviously in the distance, they're kind of more greys and merging into each other as opposed to what's going on down here where there's lots going on. I think of lots of things, lots of things are happening now, which I'm happy, a lot happier about. Coming over here is more diagonal. Don't be, don't be too far up. You want to stop around here with those real vivid lines. You might have a couple of darker ones there you could add later on, um, but just keep to the light tones for now, and you can touch up them later on. For example, down here, for example, we've got these lots of darker tones just below that lightest ripple on the left hand side before we get to the sand. Okay, what we are going to do is same blue here, which we might as well we'll do some scores on the rocks on the left hand side. Now, you just want to pick out, don't go right into the distance. I think I've already done some of this on my own, um, all these jagged rocks, but from about here, just as probably the left of the bench, just pick out very delicately the tops of the rocks, pick out the light sources on those lighter, sort of browny, yellowy sort of rocks there. 
and I'm using blue again so the blue sort of merges with the purple. We used a lot of purple in the last video. So what we're going to do, we're going to use lots of this lighter blue now just to get those lighter tones on those rocks. Again, just stay to the top edge of the rock each time, don't do anything else. Because those other brown magenta colours acts as the other areas of the rocks in the shadows there. So you have a sense of it going into the distance and again it's very important not to repeat yourself and so notice every rock has its own personality, same with leaves on a tree or whatever like that, branches, everything. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave it like that. Um, we're going to do one more video and we're going to be probably put some sand effects in with a sponge and then maybe uh, doing some touch-ups like the light on the lamppost and things and the darker sources and the water and then we'll finish it. So this is you know relatively simple but again you can keep adding more and more detail to this if you want to. All right.